Hello, thank you for listening and watching You Had Options. This episode I have Elvis tribute artist Dwight Eisenhower and his wife Vicky on. It's great. He talks about uh, the the lifestyle behind being an Elvis tribute artist. And uh, you learn about the, the competition scene and, and everything that goes along with it. Um, it's a great conversation. Really enjoy speaking with them. Uh, make sure to check out Dwight uh, on Instagram at Dwight underscore Eisenhower underscore ETA. Um, make sure you check out You Had Options. Uh, Instagram is at You Had Options, so is the Twitter. Uh, I'm about to start up my Twitch under the You Had Options umbrella, so be on the lookout for that. Um, it's going to be at, or it's going to be whatever, twitch.tv slash You Had Options. Yeah. Thanks for listening and watching. They only see Dwight on stage. Yeah, as as Elvis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I think. Yeah. Uh, I record. I started recording after you said we can talk about whatever. Uh, okay. But <laughs> Dwight and Vicky, thank you for joining me. Hey man, What's thanks up? for having yeah. us. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm excited to have y'all on. Whenever I kind of started this this podcast out of like um kind of COVID just boredom and needing an outlet like creative outlet a creative outlet yeah yeah and i i thought you guys were one of the one of the first uh couple of guests i was like they'd be cool to have on dope yeah <laughs> man i'm glad you asked us man yeah. it's weird because everybody always interviews him so this is the first time i've been asked to be a part of anything and i'm like ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting <laughs> Uh, well, you know, I'm behind the camera yeah right uh which i thought of the term earlier um, I don't know if it's accurate or if uh, you might hate it, Vicky. But uh, wifeager is that, is that a term? Wifeager. I think somewhere in there it's a term. No. <laughs> Would you, you're not really my. You don't consider yourself like my. No, man. I don't. Oh. I, I I I consider it like you. You know how yeah. you said it's a creative outlet. So that's yeah. kind of what what we do. Well, what I do, what it is for me. So you know, sometimes it's makeup right you know like i do the crazy makeup or you know with him it's just this new youtube show that we've been doing right and um so yeah you you guys started a, a youtube show the the mm -hmm. ice and hour yeah how is how has that been going for y'all have you had a good response from that yeah you know i mean we've we've been able to basically keep our audience uh, somewhat involved with us. You know, I mean, when COVID happened, just like everything else, you know, live performing, whatnot was shut down. So we couldn't do anything. So we were like, how can we still get our show out there right. or get ourselves out there, you know, and uh, people started catching on to it. And uh, so we got a really, you know, a pretty good following. I mean, yeah. th throughout the episodes, I mean, we had more and more people tuning in, sharing it. So it's, Good. And everybody was doing, well, a lot of people were doing Facebook Live, which we right. do also, but we wanted to do something still different than that. I mean, we still include music in the Ice Hour, but, you know, he does story time, uh, he'll answer questions, and it was just all about people getting to know him as a person. Right. Just, you know, we're in our house, we're in our living room, we're not fooling anybody, we're not on stage right. or anything. This is, this is just us right i mean i th personally i think until like we started doing these ice now it's like people thought i walked around with jet black hair all the time going hey baby you know yeah you're giving me yeah. a chicken sandwich man you know <laughs> so, right you know. even in the beginning people were like are you ever gonna wear the jumpsuit and we're like we're in our fucking living room like you know <laughs> no we're not gonna wear the jumpsuit <laughs> can i say the f word go you can say whatever you <laughs> want yeah okay good yeah <laughs> um Whenever you first 
started um, becoming an Elvis tribute artist, Dwight, uh, was there any conflict, like internal conflict of like, man, I need to be more Elvisy, like off stage, or like you're just saying? You know, I think anybody who who gets into this business, I mean, you know, if you're an Elvis, well, pretty much you got to be an Elvis fan. You know, right. you don't just go, man, I got a really nice Halloween costume. I think I'm the king now. Right. You know, it doesn't happen like that. Yeah. So I, I think pretty much anybody that, that starts out in this business, you know, in the beginning, you're really trying to Elvis it up. You know, yeah. you're just trying to be as much like Elvis as possible. And then, you know, now knowing what I know now, looking back at like old footage of myself, I'm just like, what the hell was I doing, man? <laughs> it's like, there's... There's never a time when I'm not like doing you know, <laughs> just moving like crazy. I'm like, man, I, I was like Elvis times 25. Eight, you know? up. <laughs> All right, eight up with it. Yeah. Uh, right. So yeah, to, to the people who don't know you, you are an Elvis tribute artist. And, um, I try to explain Elvis tribute artists, uh, to my friends and it's, it's <laughs> tough. Can you, can you explain to the listeners like what an Elvis tribute artist is? Well, to me, I mean, it's probably something different to everybody, but right. to me, an Elvis tribute artist is the ultimate form of paying tribute to Elvis. I mean, yeah. as an Elvis fan, this is the way that I put out my love for Elvis Presley. You know, I go up on stage, I I, I give people a chance to maybe experience something they never got to, you know. Right. I mean, I, was, I wasn't born until 1981, and Elvis died in 77, you right. know, so there's a whole nother generation of elvis fans that came after elvis died so this gives you know them a little glimpse of of what what it might have been like and like why people love elvis presley right. you know the original fans why they love elvis presley right. um yeah uh but but also sorry on, just to kind of um i don't want to cut you off no. but like for example we watch a lot of rupaul's drag race we love right. drag queens and stuff like right. that and we even talk about how it's even similar to that in a lot of ways yeah. you have like, you're going out there, you're doing what you love. You're performing, you're, you're spreading like this love for this art, this right. art form. And you know, there's a lot of makeup involved. There's wigs involved. There's <laughs> dancing, there's moving. Right. There's never realized how much I had in common with drag Queens. man. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's you're a drag King right here. Man. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think, um, I feel that Elvis tribute artists and like you guys have brought up, um, drag queens and I put, I lump it in with professional wrestling too. Um, uh, yeah. and I love professional wrestling and, yeah, you know, same yeah, here. right. And so, uh, you know, going to these competitions, it's, um, it's, uh, it's an, it's an event and it's something that I never thought I would picture myself at. But, uh, I think the first one my brother and I went to, um, was in Tupelo. I, I forgot what, maybe 2015 or 16. And, uh, I was like, yeah, I knew who Elvis was and I liked Elvis, but going there, I was like, I was bit, you know, by the Elvis bug or whatever. Right. And, yeah. uh, and just the whole competition aspect, I was like, this is incredible. This is wild. Yeah. Like I, I, you know, um, can you explain like a competition to, to the people? Yeah. You know, when you kind of compare the wrestling thing, right. the uh, professional, you know, WWF wrestling, w, right. WWE, whatever, it, it is very similar because there, there are characters in this Elvis world, right. man. I mean, you know, so when you're backstage at these competitions, I mean, everybody's in the zone, you know, <laughs> it, it, it's like, it's like, you'll have the, the one and, and me, I never took myself like too seriously. Like I always just was like, well, I'm just going to go out there and have fun, do my own thing. Right. You know, I I'll either win or not. But there's a lot of guys that are like getting in the zone, man. They're like adjusting their necklaces and putting their rings on, like looking in the mirror and making faces, you know, doing the lip. Right. I'm like, these guys are really, you know, but it, it's just like the wrestling, you know, yeah. you see like, uh, you know, start, like I, I'm an old school right. wrestling guy. Like I like the old guys. So yeah. it's like, I just remember seeing footage of like Sergeant Slaughter and, you honky know, honky man. tonk man, right. you know. And all these guys, and it's very similar. But, you know, these Elvis contests, man, it's like, 
if you go into the thing thinking that you're going to win, like, well, I got this thing. Well, there's some other guy coming around the corner who is also saying that, and he might, you know, hand your blue suede shoes to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, how long have you been uh, a tribute artist? And then I started artist. my uh, sophomore year of high school. This was this is probably going on like my 22nd, 23rd year. Dang. Wow. Yeah. I mean, do, you know, doing it in general, professionally, probably since the year 2000. Okay. It's, yeah. So, and still a long time. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so uh, you won the ultimate Elvis. Uh, what year was yeah. that? 2016. I tried for many years. I mean, leading up to this, I've yeah. I, it, I won on the tenth anniversary of it, um, which was really cool to win, the, you know, on a big one like that. Uh, but I had tried to win the thing like probably seven times before that. I had entered, yeah. and I, I placed, you know, uh, you know, in the top, I think five, like a couple times, and then you know, a couple times I got kicked out the first round. So I was like, you know, I'm just gonna keep Still going. Trying. I might be the oldest living guy they ever give it to, but you know, eventually <laughs> I'll win it. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, but it's cool that you don't, you never gave up because now you hold five world championship titles, right? Yeah, five. five yeah. So wow, five world championship. I'm titles. the only Elvis tribute artist in history to win five world championships. So the uh, world championship. What is is that? Uh, is the ultimate considered well, a world championship? Yeah. Well, the ultimate's like the Super Bowl, right? Of, yeah. yeah. You know, so the ultimate is sanctioned by Elvis Presley Enterprises in Graceland. It's, it's the biggest Elvis contest in the world. Okay. So um, the other ones were like before the ultimate. So before the ultimate was the ultimate, there was like Images of the King, um, which used to be called Images of Elvis. They were the original um, Elvis Presley World Champion Contest. And right. I won that one in 2013. And then there, there become another, um, the Epic World Championship, the Elvis Presley International Championship uh, contest. It was held in Memphis, and I won that one. And then what was the other King one? King of the World. Uh, King of the World, yeah, twice. Nice. I won it back-to-back -back, uh, in 11 and 12. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. Quite quite the, uh, you know, the... Uh the trophy case of you yeah know. another thing we always compare it to is like if you ever watch toddlers and tiaras <laughs> yeah i have yeah <laughs> and so you know how there's all these like competitions yeah. in different cities and then it's like and going on to be like the ultimate miss cupcake or whatever <laughs> and you know right. and then like and then from there these little girls get to go and compete at these bigger events so that's kind yeah. of like what it is with these contests you 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 enter a preliminary contest in a city right and then if you win that you then you're Memphis. thrown into you know the draw to go compete in memphis for whether it's the ultimate or images of the king mm. or any of the other world championships so you're competing you're competing with people to go and compete with more guys yeah. again wow. and then it's Whoever gets to the top. Wow. Uh, and so you, <laughs> winning the ultimate, you you said um, you're under contract with Elvis Presley Enterprises. And uh, how long is that contract, can I ask? You know, it, it wasn't so much a contract with Elvis Presley Enterprises. Uh, the year that I won, you yeah. got a contract to, to, to uh, perform with Legends in Concert. Okay. Heard? Yeah, yeah. they've got them like in Branson, yeah. uh, out in Las Vegas. There's several different ones throughout the United States. Yeah. So you get a contract with them. But the, the coolest thing that happened to me uh, from winning the Ultimate is every year after I have headlined with Elvis Presley Enterprises, whether it be during Elvis week yeah. or whether it be like, like here right now, I'm hosting uh, my first ever hosting event. I'm going to be hosting the whole uh, weekend, basically this weekend here at Graceland. So it's going to be a new, uh, new opportunity for me because I won the ultimate, you know, they, wow. they let me do that. So, yeah. So hosting, are you, are you going to be like, uh, is it like hosting like the Oscars where you're going to be running around and doing all sorts of stuff? Yeah. You know, I'm basically going to be the MC for the whole weekend. Yeah. Uh, I'll be, uh, performing also. So like, let's say I introduce the first act, they come out before I introduce the second act, I'll do a song or two. And then just basically to, to keep the flow of the whole weekend going. So I'll be, I'll be like the, you know, the MC. Right. The, uh, 
That's exciting. That's cool. Yeah, it's uh, a first for me. I've never, never, ever done anything like this, so I'm, I'm anxious to see how it all turns out. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Though. Are you going to try and perform uh, a song you don't normally perform or something, something wild? Actually, no? it's funny you you ask that. I'm going to um, introduce this Elvis audience to my my idea of maybe songs that Elvis should have recorded. So I'm going to throw a few of my own twists and turns in there i'm gonna do some stray cats oh wow uh, i'm gonna do a springsteen song uh as elvis and elvis vocals um what else am i doing i'm gonna do a queen, queen song. song yeah what queen song CCR. Are you doing? yeah i'm doing some ccr as elvis i'm gonna do a crazy little thing called love just because of the elvis influence mm-hmm. in that song yeah uh the rock, the this, town. rock this town by rock the stray the cats nice. um what else are we doing uh fire by bruce springsteen nice you should talk about uh, that one, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if maybe you know the story, or maybe some of the people watching this, I have no clue if they know the story <laughs> or not. But uh, you know, Bruce Springsteen had a dream, like in in the mid 1970s. He dreamed this song up, and he woke up and he wrote down what he could remember from this dream. And the only voice he could re- he could hear singing this song in this dream was Elvis's voice. Yeah. So he drove to Graceland from New Jersey. He drove here. And hopped the gates of Graceland and went running up toward the house with a with a copy of, of Rolling Stone magazine to prove who he was. He was right. like, "Look, I'm right here on the cover, guys. Yeah. I'm I'm the guy, you know." So he never made it. They stopped him before he before he got there. And anyhow, Elvis was out of town. Elvis was like in Vegas or something. Yeah. So Bruce never got to get this song to Elvis. So we're going to show him what it might have sounded like had Elvis got to record oh. Fire by Bruce Springsteen. Wow. So. You, you would think if you're on the cover of Rolling Stone, there'd be easier ways to get right. in touch with Elvis's people. <laughs> Yeah, you know. it was the seventies, though. You know? Right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Uh, so I'll just take my magazine and prove it to him. Man. Just drive across the country, and we'll we'll show him uh, <laughs> who's the boss. Right? Yeah. Um, Vicky, were you before you met Dwight? Were you always into Elvis? My entire life. It's so weird though, because like in California, um, we don't we didn't really have the impersonators tribute artists and stuff like that i mean the only guys that we would ever hear about were the guys in vegas right you know so i didn't even know anything about the elvis tribute artist world or any of that um so in 2008 um i was making good money i was able to book my own trip out here to graceland and i did the whole memphis thing and i was like holy shit like this is bigger than what i kind of like you going to tupelo right right like this is bigger than what in my mind i thought it was going to be i thought elvis week was going to be like older people visiting or like locals visiting i didn't know it was this whole world of elvis tribute artists um young people I mean, there, there, there people were from all over the world. people from all over the world. Right. My mind was fucking blown. I was just like, wow. I called my sister. I was crying. I said, dude, this is like, <laughs> this is like Disneyland <laughs> for Elvis fans, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, um, but even when I met Dwight, cause I still hadn't seen a tribute show or anything. And when I met Dwight, I met him just as himself so okay. talking and whatever. And then like the next day, this was months This was like in November when I met him, but, um, of that same year, but we're just talking I met him as himself. And then I saw him and I was like, holy shit, this guy's like a big deal just because of how much he sounded like Elvis. But I didn't, you know, I remember asking him, so you do this for a living? Like, this is all you do? You don't, <laughs> this isn't like a side job. She's or, like, so what else you do? Okay. Yeah, what else do you do? I mean, you know, I, I, I've i worked my my whole life, so I didn't know that you could do something like this yeah. and totally make a living and travel the world doing it. That's freaking crazy. Right. Uh, yeah. Nope. <laughs> it's a, it, where's a place in the world, Dwight, that you perform that you're like, man, it's crazy that I'm here doing this. What's, what's Japan. Like, Japan? Japan, man. Yeah. Every time I go to Japan, it just blows my mind uh, that I'm there. Like yeah. you said, just I'll look around and be like, I'm in Japan right. singing freaking Elvis songs. You know, yeah. it's like, 
because of Elvis, because this, because I do this, I, it, you know, I'm able to be here. It's, it's crazy how, you know, I, I would have never dreamed that I would be playing the places, you know, I, I actually thought this was just going to be like a fluke, man. Like, <laughs> you know, do a birthday party here right. and there, you know, I figured I would be like teaching music right now, you know? Yeah. So it's, so it's kind of crazy how it turned out, but wow. I'm glad, I'm glad I'm not teaching music and I'm glad I'm able, you know, to do what I do. So. Yeah. It seems like a, a pretty, pretty sweet gig. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah. And so like, um, I didn't realize that Elvis didn't tour outside of America. Right. Did yeah. He, uh, he played Canada. Yeah. He did yeah. play Canada, uh, one time. Uh, for several concerts, but yeah, Colonel Parker was an illegal alien. Elvis's oh, manager, right. yeah. Colonel Tom Parker, was was here illegally uh, from from Holland, Holland. and um, so he he couldn't travel. And because C- Colonel couldn't travel, then Elvis didn't go anywhere because <laughs> he didn't go anywhere, couldn't go anywhere without the Colonel. Right. You know? And so, like, uh, I guess going to other countries, it's. Um, even though it's been a while since, you know, he passed away, uh, it's got to be crazy for them that people never had a chance to see Elvis, but there's this huge, you know, impact still. Yeah. All over the world. All over the world, man. Yeah. It just, uh, when I play, especially Japan, a couple of places that come to mind is Japan and like, um, basically all over Europe. I always say, you know, when we play Europe, it's like, the crowds, um, it's like they're just discovering rock and roll music because the crowds are younger. Yeah. You know, they'll be young, young people. They're college age. When we play Amsterdam, it's like it's all majority, like people probably in their mid to late 20s. And I would say the oldest people there are probably 60. Mm. And they're all singing every word, even the obscure songs. Like, because we get really obscure in that in that show. Like, we'll do some songs that, you know, are like B sides that wasn't played on the radio a lot, and they'll be singing the words to every single song, and, and it just blows my mind because here it's like, you know, you you got to do, you have to do the signature songs, and you can throw in a couple of the the obscure ones that have become well known because we've done them so much, right. you know, but not just well known strictly for when they came out. People love them, you know. Right. It's, so it's a lot different over there. It's. uh yeah, and Japan's the same way. I mean, I can do anything over there. It's just, and a lot of the shows I do overseas, I'm as myself. I, I don't even dress like Elvis. I'm really? just like this, you know? Yeah, my own hair, uh, just a regular suit. So they're more into the music, I would say. Mm. Elvis's music, which really is what it should be about, right. is the music. Yeah. But uh, yeah. it's it's a lot different, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I guess... Uh... Over here, you got to have the jumpsuits and uh, the whole everything or people do. Do people get uh, over here? Do people get like um, uh, not offended? But if uh, if if you are playing a song like out of um, an era, an era, I guess. Yeah. Uh, do people get like, hey, man, you can't be playing that song. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, not so much at the shows, but like online, I get a lot of that. Like I'll be in a jumpsuit, you know, right. I'll be up, I'll be up singing, you know, in a jumpsuit and someone in the audience will yell out like, you know, do hound dog or something, yeah. which is a song from 56, you know, and my band will start playing the 56 version of hound dog. Cause yeah. that's the most recognizable version. And then I'll get some troll on, you know, on YouTube or whatever going, this guy sucks, man. Shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't he know that Elvis didn't wear the Aloha when he, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Jeez, man. check out this Elvis move, man. Yeah. Hey. We're just trying to have some fun here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but it's actually, you know, it's kind of funny though. Cause speaking of like trolls, we actually kind of like reading the comments because oh, yeah. I don't know, so we many. have like such a twisted sense of humor. So when we go online and we read some of the comments, like we laugh our asses off, you know. We actually thought about doing a whole segment of the Ice and Hour show of just me reading, like you know, like celebrity yes. meet tweets. Yeah, yeah. That that thing that Jimmy Kimmel does. I right. thought about doing it, but then you know, there there are some I used to get really pissed off when I would read this stuff, but like 
I, you know, we got to town. I'm like, yeah, this is kind of yeah, stupid. That I'm getting, shit. yeah. <laughs> so, but now we just laugh at it because there was this one that that said it was this whole elaborate thing that said Dwight Eisenhower passed away <laughs> today in Memphis uh, in his hotel on his Super Eight hotel bathroom. Uh, while eating a large Domino's pizza, <laughs> like it was like it just Ooh, it buddy. just went on and on. By the end of it, I'm like crying, laughing so hard. It, but I mean, just... like to think that some of these people just sit there and write all of this. Yeah. Um. yeah. <laughs> or or the, the 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 thing on his head is a phony and made from the tail of a pony. That was one of my favorite ones. Yeah, yeah. talking about my wig. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now we just. Now we just kind of screenshot these comments and, and send them to our friends. Yeah, and then we send them to our friends. We're like, look at this shit. <laughs> Do uh, I guess is that that's got to be a common thing among tribute artists, like uh, oh, it is just getting trolled. It is, and a lot of times, you know, it's like other ETAs, their fans who are just their fans only will start looking at other guys online. Just, just to comment something shitty, on, yeah. you know, on the other guy's thing, like, you know, he's good, but he's no blah blah, you know, whoever. <laughs> like, of course, of course, I'm not that guy. That's your favorite freaking guy. Why would you? Why would you say I'm better than your guy? You know, it's like in this and, business. And, sorry, go. Also, no, go on. In this business, <laughs> man, it's like, for the most part, you know. The actual Elvis fans and right. the tribute art fans are phenomenal. I love right. them. But, you know, there are people, there are fans, and I figure everybody has these type of fans that will sometimes try to pin artists against each other. Mm. So we get a lot of that, too. Like, like you know, well, I saw so-and-so sing that song, and he did it much better. You know, <laughs> when, when, when that guy's reading it also going, hey, he's one of my friends. Yeah. Why are you... If this is not a competition, we've already won the contest, right. you know? So it's like every, but to a lot of the fans, it it's still a competition. It's like and the whole wrestling thing. Yeah, it is. Ooh, yeah. Wow. It's like they've already won the, the world title, right. you know? Yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah. <laughs> Ultimate Warrior is so much better than Dwight yeah, Eisenhower. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What you gonna do, brother? There you go. Sean Michaels. <laughs> What's yeah. um, Shawn Michaels came out in the leather furs. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, but the Ultimate Warrior wore the fringe, man. It's fringe everything. <laughs> um, so do you, uh, do you guys, I know Dwight, you said um, you're an older wrestling guy. Vicky, do you keep up with uh, current wrestlers at all? Or? Not the newer stuff. It's all the old school stuff like, like yeah. him, you know, Macho Man and... Oh my God! Jake the Snake, Jake the Snake, right. Brutus the Barber, Beefcake, yeah. and <laughs> Brother Love, and all that stuff. Yeah. Now everyone knows how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> now it's uh... my uncle. My, my actually, my mother's sister um, was married to a WWF wrestler. His name was the Moon Dog. They were tag team. Uh, and before the Moon Dog, he was Buddy Donovan. Okay. Uh, was, I'm going way back. This is like 70s wrestling, 80s, early 80s, and then he did it clear up through like maybe um, the late 80s. Yeah. But uh, his name was the Moon Dog, and I, I, when I was a kid, he used to take me around to all the, the wrestling matches. I got to meet. I got to like go back in the locker room and meet uh, Sergeant Slaughter. Um, wow. Who else was there? Uh, Rowdy Ronnie Piper was there. Right. And then I remember before the main guys come out, they had midget wrestling. <laughs> so I got, to, I, I got my picture taken with like the little midget wrestlers. And so it was, it was really cool. I, that's how I got into wrestling. I just, I've loved it, you know? Yeah. Time as a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been trying to, I'm, I'm working on getting more like independent wrestlers on here. Um, on this podcast yeah we watched your one uh the last one. the last yeah, one yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. F, that was so cool man F, we were great. loving it yeah he's yeah. uh it's fun like uh old school um kind of uh he's been compared to the he's been called the gay rick flair and i you know it, <laughs> it, it, it fits you know yeah. um uh but yeah it's to go you know, back gone the thing that i miss though you know i can't it's hard for me to get into like the newer stuff only yeah. because i miss like that campiness of like yeah. the old school you know what i mean like yeah, they yeah. had these 
themes right. and characters. And, yeah. It's like a so, yeah. it's like a soap opera. Like right. every week it would pick back up, you know. Right. Like uh you have an occupation, um, you know. Right. You're you're a garbage <laughs> man, you know, or right. you're a barber or a, right. you know, in the army. And uh Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I th- So I miss that. Yeah, mm. I feel like um like the WWE they um they made so much money off of like the rock and stone cold. And that was just like amplified versions of themselves, the, the character, um, that they're just like stuck in that kind of, uh, that kind of, um, story arc. But right. In like independent wrestling, there's that's, it's way more campy and like old school. There's, you know, yeah. Serious wrestlers like doing all the crazy corkscrew, you know, four fifty. Uh, yeah stuff like that but um it's more fun yeah it, it reminds me a lot of like um like punk rock like touring around and going to a punk rock show it's very similar to like an independent wrestling show right yeah yeah, mm. yeah. uh dwight whenever you're doing shows do you do you bring along like other etas or is it just no, you know, sometimes I do. Sometimes uh, we'll do like uh, a show where I'll bring in other guys and we'll do one guy will do like rockabilly and one guy will do 68 black leather. I'll do jumpsuit or we'll, yeah. I usually try to pick guys that can do a little bit of everything versus just zone in on one thing. That way, if I, you know, if I want to do something different that night, I can put somebody else on jumpsuit, you know. Yeah. So, you know, but that that's what's good about especially the guys, a lot of the guys that have won the ultimate contest can do multiple eras, you know, mm-hmm. um, like me, I, I, I can sing the rockabilly through like Elvis in Vegas. So right. I, I can vocally cover any of that stuff. Um, so it just, it just basically it opens you up more to, to be able to do a wide variety of things. You know, if someone calls and wants, you know, a voiceover to be like a rockabilly guy, you know, if I, if I just have a, a deep, you know, Elvis tone, like, you know, singing my way or something, right. they wouldn't necessarily want me to do that. But, you know, so a lot of the guys that I bring in, they can do a little bit of everything. Yeah. The, um, that made me, uh, remember you did a Apple commercial. Yeah. That was really cool, man. We were out in, um, we were actually out in Chicago at a big Elvis festival, yeah. uh, produced by Jason Sherry. And, um, we were out there and I noticed this lady, uh, it was actually myself, Dean Z. There was probably seven or eight other Elvis tribute artists. And then they had, I think they had a contest that weekend too. So there was like Mm -hmm. Elvis guys all over the place. Yeah. Um, but we noticed this lady, she was just kind of like walking around being really quiet, but like taking photos and like filming here and there talking into her phone and like, what's the deal with this lady? You know? Well, and, she was um, gonna, like from the newspaper. Yeah, something. we thought we, she was like from like a local news or something like yeah. that. So, so like after the thing, she comes up to me and she's like, "I really want to interview you, you know, get some headshots and and whatnot because uh, we're filming a commercial." But at that time, she couldn't tell me what it was for. <laughs> like it was very hush hush, you know. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, you're filming a commercial. It's gonna be some, you know. Come down to Uncle Charlie's car lot and get a you know free pack of donuts when you get it you know whatever right something yeah. hokey you know I yeah. thought it was gonna be just like a, a, a hokey thing so like I, I didn't want anything to do with it I was like ah thanks but no thanks then like a week goes by and I start my phone starts blowing up from this lady she just keeps calling and calling leaving messages and then finally uh, she she's like okay I'm just gonna tell you what it is you know i'm gonna give you uh the, the guy your number he's the producer he's the he's the um director of, of this uh commercial so I, I this guy calls me and he's like okay man i'm just gonna cut to the chase it's for apple and i'm like okay, okay I'll, I'll yeah, do believe that. <laughs> yeah. right away i was like yes i'll do it yeah so uh he explained it to me and everything and and i thought you know he i i just told him right off the bat i was like man if it has anything to do with like making Elvis look like a joke or I said, I'm the wrong guy. I said, yeah, you need to get like some Halloween guy to yeah, do yeah. it. You know? Go back to party city. Yeah. Go back to party <laughs> city. <laughs> so, so, uh, it was great though, man. Uh, I mean, they agreed to everything I said. They, they, at one point they wanted me to do something a little bit cheesy, like look in the camera and be like, you know, thank you very much or something uh, like that. Yeah. And I was like, no, I said, I don't really want to do that. But, 
basically, for those of you who haven't seen the commercial, it's an Apple commercial that that's uh, has to do with like the group FaceTime app. And uh, I played during the Super Bowl in 2019. Oh. So that was that was really cool. But it's basically about how the music of Elvis Presley is bringing all these people, uh, mm-hmm. all these Elvis tribute artists from around the world together. Yeah. You know, they're all singing his one song. And then at the end of the commercial, everybody's there in the hotel room standing behind me. And, you know, so Elvis brought everybody together, which I thought was a cool, you know, cool little commercial to do. It so, touched close to home. Yeah, it's oh cool. It's a good I, I can I can see it in my mind's eye right now. I'm Yeah, yeah, it's it, good. I was blown away, man, when I saw it because, you know, being there in it and everything, you don't you know what's going to out. On. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they had sets there. I mean, we were like right in hollywood we filmed this thing so i mean you know right next door was like it, and everything was so yeah every, yeah we couldn't say anything man. yeah i mean I, I couldn't talk about it for like to anybody i told her but right you now <laughs> but they even took away like your cell phone yeah and- took away our cell phones we couldn't take cell phones in there and man you know the opening scene of that i'm sitting on a bed with a guitar i mm-hmm. opened the thing and that scene, that little scene, man, that took like eight seconds right there. We filmed that for four days for 16 hours. We were there. Jesus. <laughs> Just, oh, it was brutal, man. And, and like the bed was not actually a bed. It was a metal sheet, like nice. this thick. Yeah, it was just a metal square. So you can imagine, man, I was like just numb. <laughs> Dwight, Dwight, you know, sometimes um, you have to suffer for art. You know, I, I guess, man. Yeah, I learned it that day. I'm like, I'm a true artist now because my I can't feel my ass. <laughs> my ass is my ass is gone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my ass in hours. <laughs> hour. Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> Where did they? Did you? Did they give you any Apple swag or any anything cool? No. Oh man, they didn't. I wish. I was they like, didn't, man. Much. I know. I, I I thought I was just gonna get like it. You know, like when you go to the Grammys, you get like a goodie bag yeah, full of like. Bag. Or watches and no, nah, the didn't paycheck mean, was sweet. Though, the paycheck so. was oh. sweet. I took the buyout, so I was like, just give me the lump sum, man. <laughs> nice, that's cool. And we're like, here you go, here you go, man. IRS. <laughs> <laughs> Make it rain, yeah, yeah, yeah. 30%, 33%, or whatever. Uh, wow. <laughs> have you been approached by people to do like uh, movies as Elvis or any like anything like that that you can talk I've about? Only, I've only dabbled in, in the whole commercials and thing i've never done any movies or anything like that I, my first commercial i ever did and if you get the chance michael look these up they're actually i will really clever and they're funny yeah uh it's ac warehouse of sarasota just look up ac warehouse okay. elvis commercials and like we changed the words to three songs there were three different commercials that played one was like uh to the wonder of you the song the wonder right. of you um it's, it's like uh and you're always there to cool my air, <laughs> fixing AC is what you do. So we, we like change right. the words. They're really funny. But this one, it opens up to burn in love. And I, I, it shows Elvis, me sitting there right. and they, I got sweat rolling all down my face. And I'm in the jungle room and it shows the temperature, you know, the, the right. thermostat and it says 109 on it. And I, I, it opens up with me blowing my hair and I goes, God, it's hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's a, it's great though. That was that was my first commercial though. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's fun. <laughs> uh, so um, have you been able to go to Graceland and explore outside of what people norm, normal people can see? Uh, you know, the, no, secret they're stuff. very, they're very uh, with, secretive. I think you pretty much got to be like, like in, like in the actual Elvis entourage, like one of the original guys to get yeah. any, any perks like that, you know, but, but what's really cool is like, since we've been to Graceland so many times, yeah. I mean, we'll go, you know, it used to be like two, three times a year sometimes. Right. And uh, so we've like learned like to, just to leave the headphones, don't take the headphones with us. And we just kind of let the fans go ahead of us and we hang back and, and we've discovered things just from doing that, yeah. not having those headphones on listening, you know, just finding little things that we had never seen before. You know, it's like, just like this trip, yeah. she pointed out, uh, we toured Graceland today actually. Yeah. And she was pointing out like this saint that Elvis had in the jungle room, like a statue 
that I had never seen. I've, I've been there like a million times. You know? So, wow. yeah, there's a lot of stuff we found on our own. Yeah, like We go and we just like let our mind take all these snapshots of <laughs> every single detail. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it's funny because we love Graceland. We, right. I mean, I love the way it looks. I love being there. I love, but everybody thinks our house is like, like gonna a, be Graceland because like, he does Elvis. Yeah, like an Elvis shrine. Yeah, so. like so for Christmas we always get like Elvis Christmas yeah. ornaments or you know, um, I don't know, just like Elvis stuff. <laughs> and it's like I mean we love Elvis, right? But and I do keep all that stuff. I yeah. do have we it do. all. Yeah. We do. I've got a whole a whole Elvis exhibit in my music room. <laughs> Yeah. And I've got probably Elvis I've probably got 30 Elvis ornaments, Christmas tree ornaments, uh 200 calendars from the year, you know. We need a velvet <laughs> Elvis though. We do need a velvet Elvis. You maybe. do. Yeah. Like like one of the old-fashioned tacky right. 1970s velvet Elvis with the aloha with the with the Sweat. wreath around his yeah. That's yeah. what we need. Yeah. Um my uh my friend started this um this Instagram account called um, Ugly Elvis, and it's just like oh. terrible. It's they they find terrible, you know, renderings of Elvis that people have done, like thrift store, oh, yeah. thrift, <laughs> thrift store. Yeah, not uh, like the Velvet Elvis you guys are wanting. I can I can yeah. think of it's not yeah, that we don't want it to look like him. We want like this, you know, the classic, <laughs> the like classic. the very first Velvet right. Elvis ever painted. One of our favorite things to do is to go on like Google Images and type in bad Elvis tattoos and Ooh, just see yeah. the <laughs> crappy Elvis tattoos. Man, there's some bad ones. <laughs> we'll be like, look, that looks like so and so. You know, it's one of those rabbit holes that you fall into at like three in the morning. Right. We're like. Hey, let's look up ugly Elvis tattoos. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> we lead a very we, we lead a very exciting life, Mike. It is. <laughs> I, it sounds. It sounds like it. <laughs> uh, do uh, so. Um, do you guys have like neighbors or friends outside of the world of Elvis that uh, expect you to be Elvis like all the time? Does that make sense? You know, um, it's kind of funny because uh, I think just in general, people kind of think that we always have a guitar with us. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so it's like, uh, hey, you know, like we're going over to so-and-so's house for Easter. I don't know, right. whatever. St. Patrick's Day. Dwight, do a song. Yeah, yeah. St. Patrick's hey, Day. Hey, Dwight, you know, yeah. It's like, hey, let's let's sing some Elvis songs or let's do karaoke. I mean, we do karaoke in our house, too. I mean, Oh, we, we, just, have, we have full-blown karaoke parties. <laughs> just, I never sing Elvis. Before, yeah, we don't ever do that. We just started doing it because <laughs> of the pandemic and yeah. being in lockdown. And, I mean, you got to get creative with your time. But just in general, I think people always think that, like I said, that Elvis is just our life 24 seven, right? you know, um, yeah, get togethers uh, and it's, and it's sometimes it, it it's hard meeting new people mm -hmm. because then they find out what you do and little by little they'll start wanting, you know, they'll start asking more and more yeah. from you. Like, hey, can you come meet my grandma? You know, can you sing her a song? Yeah. Can you? And it's just like, oh, I just want to be normal. <laughs> grandma doesn't know where she is. Yeah, She'll yeah, think well, you're the real Elvis. Yeah. yeah, go meet your grandma. That's yeah. fine. But, you know, like they want them to put on a jumpsuit yeah. or, you know, um, it used to be like we couldn't uh, even go to the grocery store around our house sometimes because people would recognize him mm. and they'll be like, hang on, let me call. So yeah, and so we would and just like be shopping, you know. We're like, okay, then they come, they come with like their aunt on the phone, right. like going, "Hey, this is yeah. my aunt Margaret." You know, I'm going hey, in the middle of the, <laughs> you know, in the middle of the the canned goods section. I'm well, saying like, holding, "Love me like, tender," you know, ice cream and everything yeah. just <laughs> melting. <laughs> so, but it's even worse though in my home, like back when I lived in Ohio. Yeah, that's where I started, man. So okay. like all of my my whole following that was that's been with me from the beginning is in ohio 
So like if I would go to Walmart or anything, man, I mean, just it, and even to this day, even though I haven't lived there for like 16 years, right. When I go back there, like I, I put a hat on, you know, and so people don't see that, the, you know, well now I've got gray hair, but, uh, but it, like you go into Walmart to buy one item and you're in there for like an hour, really? which, you know, you look, you can look at it like, man, I just want to just go to Walmart and come home just quick, quick trip. But then you kind of look at it like, well, that's a good thing though. Right. It's a good thing that people want to talk to you. And yeah. so I'm never, I'm never like, you know, Hey man, I'm just trying to buy a, yeah, a no. six pack. You know, I, I'm, I'm not like that. <laughs> As you're doing the Elvis voice, you're like, yeah, no, no, step back, man. <laughs> and, <laughs> you can start doing the karate kicks. You know? and, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's only two people who know karate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, and and it's true. Like we do, we'll stand and we'll talk. And sometimes, I mean, it could be raining on right. us, and people are like, "Hang on a second, hey, did I tell you about so and so? And she just loves you and your new CD, and and you're just getting poured on." And we're like, "Oh, thanks, that's cool, thanks." Yeah. Yeah. And you know, like I said, we we we're, love we the fans. absolutely yeah. yeah we love the fans. I right. mean, and not at all. And, and a lot, there are friends too, you know, right. a lot of, a lot of the people we just got to know and we love them. Uh, so it, it's, it's kind of, you know, in one sense you're, you're saying, you know, well, I'd like to get out of Walmart really soon. But like I said, if it, if it wasn't happening, then you'd start to worry, you know, yeah, if nobody yeah. cares, you know, you'd <laughs> be like, Hey, <laughs> yeah. where's everybody at? I've got my stick of gum here. I'm ready to leave. Anybody wants, you know, <laughs> 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 Yeah. Uh, you're on the intercom. Hello. Yeah, no, I, I'm here. Anybody? Dwight Eisenhower is up front. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. Um, I had a bit that I I kind of wrote. Uh, would you guys be interested in doing a bit? Yeah, let's totally. do it, man. Okay. So, um, you know, as as you know, um, Elvis had so many movies. Uh. And um, uh, from uh, from a, a, a cinephile uh, point of view, not not the best stories in the world. Right. Right. Um, yeah. So I kind of came up with some modern. Uh, if Elvis was here today, some yeah. modern, you know, um, modern problems that you know he might run into, and I was going to see if we could workshop. Let's do yeah. it. Do you think so? Okay. Yeah. Uh, right. Let me see. The, the the first one, the first idea I came up with um, is uh, Elvis is um, staying at an Airbnb, and he, he has found out that the um, the the <laughs> owner of the Airbnb is uh, abusive to his wife. And so Elvis oh, Elvis is trying to take the wife away from the situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that, that's kind of where I just, you know, right for, for that one. That's, that's, uh, what, can you guys run with that? What do you, what do you, what do you think? Is that well, Elvis legs? would, uh, at the, about that time, about when Elvis is witnessing the, 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 yeah. the, the deal going down, the abuse, right. I think Elvis would step in with a couple karate chops to the guy. And then he would immediately start singing to the girl. Right. So he'd be like, you know, hey, baby, you don't need that shit. Let's get out of here before I break his head like a brick. You know, it'd be something like that. Then he would sweep her off her feet and take her away. So Okay, Elvis. Yeah, come on, baby. <laughs> you don't need that shit. <laughs> See? It's so easy. I mean, we know these. Elvis wouldn't have said shit. They wouldn't allow him to right. say shit. But this is a modern movie, so... Maybe so maybe Elvis is edgier. Yeah, he would have been edgier for sure because Elvis wanted to be more serious. You know, he wanted the serious roles. Yeah. Uh, yeah, wasn't he, he was supposed <laughs> to be in uh, what you call it? Uh, Stars born. Stars born. Stars born. Yeah. 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 Mm. That was another Colonel Parker uh, travesty that, because Elvis wanted to do it, and Colonel was like, "If if Elvis does not have top billing, it has to say Elvis starring Elvis Presley with Barbara, Barbara Streisand." Streisand. And it was Barbara Streisand's movie. Like she was the, you know, right. she was the lead actress. It was, I think she was even the pr the producer of it, maybe. Wow. So, wow. Colonel was like, "No way, man." <laughs> Colonel yeah. was like the best thing to happen to Elvis, and also the like the, the worst, worst thing. Yeah. 
Wow. He was great for Elvis in, in the in the early days, like get you know getting his face out there on everything. Milton Burl, Ed Sullivan, you know, all these TV shows. But then you know, toward the end, I think he kind of took advantage of him. But Lee, Lee, no good. Yeah. Mm. Okay, <laughs> the, the 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 I think that one was good. I think we got yeah. something there. Oh uh, yeah. The second one is um, Elvis is delivering uh. For, for Uber Eats. Oh, I like that. <laughs> okay. And, and then uh, he delivers to um, an aspiring actress who falls in love with him while while he's delivering, like whatever, her eggplant parmesan, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you, I don't know where the conflict is there. Well, the conflict is that Uber Eats, my Uber Eats is late. Yeah. Yeah. Elvis is late delivering my food because he's up the street kicking ass <laughs> after watching an altercation between. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> so see, yeah. now we're morphing the two storylines oh, into man. one. So now you got to. So, so Elvis, Elvis is an, okay. I'm trying to get to, to get come up with something. Right. Yeah. So Elvis is a, is an Uber East driver and he's late delivering to this lady right that, that, that? yeah okay well i think probably what would have happened why elvis would have been late in this movie probably is he was because elvis loved he was a southern boy so he right. loved good cooking so maybe half of it was gone maybe before he got it to the lady so he had to go back fix another batch so and then Elvis gets fired. The king of rock and roll gets fired from every. He can't keep an, the Uber, Uber Eats job. Wow. So, so it's all come down to just you know Elvis just samples this stuff. Not he doesn't eat the whole thing. Right. But he realizes you know that hey half of it's gone now. So right. I got to go back. You know? But but she loves him through it in the end. She loves him through it. Yeah. yeah. She's she's like you know what. But he is the king of rock and roll. He, he's well, you know, he wouldn't be the king of rock and roll in a movie, though. He'd be the king of rock and roll playing a character, yeah, king of Uber. He'd be the king of yeah. Uber Eats. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. yeah, we'll figure it that one. Might not, well, I don't know, that one might not. We work. might have to. I still like the storyline of he's late delivering Uber Eats because he was, because he was over saving there a lady doing some karate, yeah, kicking yeah. ass and saving a lady up the way. From, yeah. Ooh. and then that lady is in the Uber car with you delivering my food. And like I fall in love with you, but I see that there's this other woman in the car. And then and, that's a whole other drama. That's a whole other drama. Escándalo. Escándalo. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> scandalous. Yes. Mm. Wow. Yeah, I, I think Vicky just punched it up a little bit. Yeah. I yeah. She, oh. uh, yeah. We need the drama in there. Yeah. yeah there's got to be drama in an Elvis Absolutely. movie. Pool, even even in the. Part. The lighthearted Elvis movies, you know, like speed. There was always some drama. There was always like a, you know, a villain right. yeah. in, in the in the movie. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that. Yeah, I think that one. That might, we might be able to sell that. I don't know. Uh, then the third one. We just got one more. Uh, Elvis is living in Hawaii. Oh yes. yeah, and um, he is a tour guide to like um social media like like landmarks where people just go to get their like selfie for their instagram yeah. um and he falls in love with an envi environmentalist uh who is mad at him for uh taking advantage of the natural beauty of the island <laughs> <laughs> Um, You've really thought about this. Well, the third one was more thought out. Yeah, uh, but yeah. So that, what that, you've almost said is almost Blue Hawaii. It's almost the movie Blue. Ha have you seen Blue Hawaii? I've not, but I've I've wikied it. It's very <laughs> similar because he is a tour guide in the movie. He's a tour guide, and he's taking this beautiful group of young girls around to, to tourist spots. Right. You know so. Okay, but I think the problem would be... You're better at this than I yes. am. Yes. Which is weird. So, it's really weird if I'm the Elvis guy. <laughs> so Elvis is a tour guide, and he's taking these people to these natural landmarks. Yeah. And let's say, like, um, what 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 is it that we visit in Kauai? The big... Volcano? Uh, 
No, not the volcano. The the canyon. The canyons. Waimea Canyon. Waimea yeah. Canyons. Okay, and there's goats there. Yeah. There's lots of goats. But yeah. what happens is when he's bringing the tourists up to take all these pictures, they're leaving trash. Yeah. Behind. They're yeah. leaving garbage. They're and these goats are eating all the garbage. So the environmentalist is pissed at Elvis because he's contributing and he's not stopping these people like right. littering at, these you know goats. Yeah. yeah these goats are shitting you know dorito <laughs> bags and, <laughs> and the hit cans. song from that movie the hit song from that movie is don't do that the goats will get fat Ooh, damn wow yeah write that down baby. print it wow <laughs> don't do that the goats will get fat <laughs> See, it's there, man. A little shimmy. It's there. Right. Wow. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Um, yeah, we've done, we've done almost an hour here. Uh, Our female star would star. be Trixie Mattel. Trixie Mattel. Tri- yes. I love Trixie Mattel. The, uh, well, how can you not? Her, She's the best. Uh, album. Album? And Margaret Who? And Margaret Who? Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> yeah. She's great. Uh yeah, uh, we've almost done an hour here. Um, have we really? We've been on here an hour? Almost. I guess we have. It's oh, 8 o'clock. Wow. Um, do you guys have any uh, parting words of wisdom or, I don't know, a, yeah, a message well, what, you want to share? When are we going to see you next? <laughs> I don't know. Well, Get we your can, butt to Memphis. Yeah, come to Memphis, it. man. <laughs> right now? You got time. Yeah, it's only Where's like Where's my like Mobile, Alabama? You can make it. It starts tomorrow, man. Uh, maybe. We'll see. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> I mean, uh, look at this portrait. Look what you're missing. I know. The look gold of May. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's, um, may, I'll see what I can do. But uh, <laughs> you guys uh, you guys stay on for a second. But Dwight okay. and Vicky, uh, you had options, but you decided to talk to me. Thank hey, you man. so much. We love Thank it. Thank you.